There's a quote I'd like to read to you. <clears throat> it's by John MacArthur. True faith is deaf to doubt, dumb to discouragement, and blind to impossibility. No matter what it experiences, it sees only the promise success. Oh, to have that kind of faith. Deaf to the doubt, dumb to discouragement, and blind to the impossibilities. Father, as we turn into your word tonight, we are challenged by our lesson on Abraham and Isaac. We are challenged, Father, to walk by faith and not by sight. I pray tonight, Father, as we open up your word, that we have a teachable heart and a teachable spirit, that you would show yourself as you are always so faithful. Help us, Father, to have a deeper walk and a deeper faith with you. We ask all these things in your precious son's name. Amen. Turn with me, please, to in Hebrews chapter 11, and your Bibles should sort of fall into Hebrews. And we are going to be in 17. Just a side note, wasn't the homework outstanding? So, so good. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was offering up his only begotten son. Mm. And it was he to whom it was said, in Isaac your descendants shall be called. He considered that God is able to raise people even from the dead, from which he also received him back as a type. In order to really grasp what Hebrews is talking about here by faith, Abraham, we just need to revisit Genesis chapter 22. We have the Old Testament here, and now we have the New Testament recording the inspiration by God to say, by faith, Abraham. To recap it, what has God actually was asking Abraham to do? Picture with me tonight, if you could just even imagine this chapter 22. I don't know about you, but I just want to slip my feet into some sandals and walk right alongside Abraham. I think about the weight and what he had asked him to do. He first tells him, I need you to go to the land of Moriah, so you're, now you're going to pack up and leave again. And now I call it the, the mountain of faith walk. <laughs> Let's keep in mind that he was constantly moving. According to the scriptures in chapter 22, when Abraham was told by God what was required of him to do, he obviously had Isaac with him. And there's also some men, the scripture tells us, that traveled with them. At some point in chapter 22, he had, they had been traveling for days, and he had told these men, you just need to stay here, because it's something now that Isaac and myself have to do. And he left them there. And the two of them began to travel to the place where then God would say, this is where you're going to be. And I love it in verse 8 in chapter 22. The scripture is so clear. It says the two of them walked together. Period. The two of them walked. That would be on Abraham's part, a walk of obedience. I call it a walk of faith and a walk of trust. He was walking. He knew what God had asked him to do. I ask you tonight, what is your daily walk with Jesus and what does that look like? Are you walking forward 
in obedience and in faith, in trust, in time of testing and in time of trial? Are you moving forward? Abraham did. This is a big test for him. Or are you sidestepping when the trials get a little tough and the testing is a little bit too difficult? Or are you possibly shrinking back or actually stepping backwards as your trials and testings come into our lives and they do? Or can I even ask you tonight, are you stuck? You just can't move. You want to move, but you just can't. And let me just tell you that this is right where the enemy wants you to be. The enemy, want, the enemy wants you to be stuck. He doesn't want you moving forward by faith. I'm going to tell you, when your testing and trials come and you are stuck, it's not a great place to be in. I can tell you that firsthand. You want to be moving forward. You need him to move you forward. This testing in scripture is an example for us. It's an act of mature faith on Abraham's life. Do you understand this? The testing here in scripture for us to take out, because it's a living, breathing word of God, is an example of mature faith. Abraham was to surrender the fulfillment of God's promise to him. Oh my word. Isaac was the promised son. We've had this for a few weeks ago. Sarah and Abraham had waited and waited. This was it. And the scripture tells us, and Abraham knew it, and the Bible tells us that through Isaac, the bloodline, your descendants will be called. So he's like, I don't understand this. But he wasn't supposed to. This is why God wanted him to move in such a way for trust and obedience and faith. I'm sure that he had all kinds of questions about this, but he had such a great deep faith. Through the entire passage in 21 and 22, God is constantly checking his faith. When God tests you and I, it is to prove and to purify our faith, ladies. You and I, when we are tested, it should cause us to seek him and trust him some more. That is what it should do. That is where you need the Holy Spirit to come along and help you because the flesh will want to check out. That is why you need that Holy Spirit to do that. Abraham's testing, ladies, was a faith in action. Abraham moved forward in obedience to complete the task that God had asked him to do. I think about that. I think about Abraham and Isaac and the traveling that it did take. He didn't stay at the end of it the bottom of the mountain he moved forward he just kept going he didn't stay put he wasn't stuck remember a few weeks ago we I mentioned unless your faith makes it all the way down to your feet it is not faith you walk by faith ladies it's action on our part it's our heart and our feet moving together by the power of the Holy Spirit it is your heart and your feet moving together by the power of the Holy Spirit. Faith is far more than an inner spiritual attitude. It is. Second Corinthians tells us that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. Abraham moved up that mountain with action and with trust. I think about that. Abraham's faith was so strong, so solid. And so deep, it was so solid and so deep and so strong that he believed that if Isaac was to die, that God would raise him back up again. That's what Hebrews chapter, uh, verse 19 tells us. That is the kind of faith 
that Abraham had. Abraham was living out his faith in real time. Every step that Abraham took to go to where God had told him to take Isaac was a step of faith. Real time. He didn't have verse 13 in chapter 22. <laughs> Did he? No. He did. We, we, we read ahead. We know how it ended. But Abraham was trusting God so much with every step that he took. I just think about that. that Abraham, you, you just laid it all out there. Didn't hold anything back. Abraham knew. I mean, like new to his core, and that challenges my faith. He knew that God is completely good and never commends evil. Mm -mm. Abraham knew that God is completely wise and he has to have a plan. <laughs> Abraham knew that God is completely just and would not treat Isaac unfairly. And Abraham knew that God is completely powerful and would keep his promise. Abraham, his trust and obedience, it challenged me deeply this week. I hope you were challenged with it as well. Abraham held nothing back. And I thought, let's just, let's just take a hot minute and just think about Isaac. Huh. Oh my. Let's just slip into his sandals for a hot minute. Right? Being with his dad, having complete trust and faith in his father, Abraham. Many commentaries, they don't give you the exact age of Isaac, but he was, he was a young man. I don't know, maybe between 18, maybe in 20, I don't know, somewhere in there. He, he was, let's just say he was old enough that he could overtake in him, his elderly father. Let's just put it that way carried the wood for his elderly father. And all the time in chapter 22, they're walking up the mountain and he sees Abraham has the fire and he has the knife. Isaac has the wood. So he says to his father, where's the lamb? He said, God's going to provide. He knew it. Walk of faith. He knew it. And then to think that his father bound him up. This is just a lesson I think for, uh, uh, we could park there and just talk about Isaac and his surrender and his obedience. I mean, that, that in itself, I think we could just land there and, and chat about that, but we have to move on. We gotta talk about our faith. We need to talk about what God has asked us to do. True faith is deaf to doubt, dumb to discouragement, blind to impossibility. No matter what it experiences, only sees the promise of success. Whew. To walk that out, knowing what God has called you to do or asked you to do. And I think, why does why do we always are being, we're always being tested, aren't we? It says, by faith, when Abraham was tested. We are tested all the time. God is testing us. He is testing us to purify us. And testing is a valuable lesson in faith for us to grow. Testing. So I ask you tonight, just answer in your own heart, when you are tested by faith, are you growing deeper or are you stuck? Fair question. Are you moving forward in testing and trial? Or are you just staying put? <coughs> testing us to purify us. The Bible refers to testing as an illustration, my sisters, to the heat 
that goes into, is it like gold or silver? When fire is put to this element, it heats it up. And all the impurities rise to the top. It's called dross. And they scrape that all off. And then what's left is either the silver or the gold in its pure state. There are times that we have trials and testings and it gets hot. It gets hot in our lives. It, we are not sheltered or immune or have a shield from things that happen to us. We're in a broken world. We have things that just happen. But we are a child of God and we are set apart. And we have Jesus to help us through our trials and our testings. We all have dross in our lives. We all have impurities. We're things that we need to have testing and trials and it's for a purpose. There's something that he's trying to get from us. With all of us, it's gonna be different. The testing and the trial is gonna be for all the different personalities and what he is wanting you to do and accomplish through your life for his kingdom. The Bible uses the parable as the sower. When the seeds go out, some were rooted deep and some were shallow. And when James tells us that when the testing would come, at that parable of the soil, when the testing comes, there's those they just gave up. They like, this is just too hard. I'm just going to tap out. We're challenged with that. That's what the flesh would want you to do. But James tells us the testing of faith develops what? Perseverance. And perseverance leads to maturity in your walk with God. Trials and testings are hard. I, I can't tell you the, the, the number of times that I have failed miserably at a test. <laughs> that God has said something in my heart, in my life. And I am like, and he's like, Paula, we're going we're gonna to revisit this again. So you, you, you need to learn this. You, you need to learn this, Paula. And, it, and eventually, you get this awareness. You're like, oh, this is a test. <laughs> Let's see what we're going to do with this. And then you pray and you ask God to help you with that. And then what do you want to learn from it? You want to learn from it. This is where it gets really hard because you're like, this is, I don't even want to learn. I don't want this. But God wants this in your heart. He wants you to surrender that to him. It is walking by faith. Our testing is, happens in real time, just like Abraham. We don't know what it's going to be, our verse 13. We still have chapters in our lives, in our hearts, and, as, until God calls us home. He's continually working. In fact, in Psalms uh, 26, 2, The Bible says, examine me, O Lord, and try me. Here it is. Test my mind and my heart. Oh, my word. Here it is. David is saying to, I, I'm asking you, God, I need you to test me. Would you please examine my heart and examine my mind and make sure that I am true to you? He's like, the, test me. Test my mind and test my heart. I love it. it. says, for your loving kindness is before my eyes. Do you ask him to test your heart and test your life? God is after our hearts, ladies. He is after our heart. He's pursuing that. What do you withhold from him? It's a, it's a question sometimes I think we need to ask ourselves. And if we pray and ask God, please 
Examine me, O Lord, and try me. Test my mind and my heart. It's real hard truth. David asked for it. God is asking the same thing for you. The sword of the spirit right here. He's asking you. Ask him. God wants you to have him search your heart. But the thing is, if you ask him to search your heart, be ready for what he's going to reveal. Sometimes you're going to be like, I don't think I'm going to ask that. (laughs) I'm just going to be silent on that part. It's accountability. Be willing to ask it. And then wait to see what he's going to reveal. I think we're going to sometimes be surprised. Psalm 51. Just turn over a little bit. And we are going to be in 16 and 17. 16. For you do not delight in sacrifice, otherwise I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God, here we go, are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. What does he want from us, ladies? The sacrifice offered with a proper heartfelt foundation of faith and being very, very sincere. He wants you to be broken, have a humble heart, and just be in search of him. We need to trust his heart We need to trust his plans, even if it's painful here on earth. Mm. We need to trust his heart and we need to trust his plans, even if there's pain here. There's times I have to ask myself, Paula, are you really trusting the heart of God in your testing and your trial? Be open and honest before him. And laying that out there before him because the flesh, man, you just want to pump the brakes. You're like, ooh, I'm not liking this testing and I'm not liking this trial. But then the power of the Holy Spirit comes along and says to you, I'm going to encourage your faith. You have his word to lead, guide, and direct you. And you have prayer with your heavenly father. That's a powerful package right there you have access to the throne room of God when you're in your testing and in your trials saying help me help me to move forward if it's hard putting one step in front of the other Abraham did not hold anything back he put it all out there even offered up his own son I just can't even imagine. Do you place everything on the altar of faith? What do you hold so dear? All of us is going to have a different answer, right? What do you hold so tight onto and have such a grip in your hand that you will not release? Or what do you have a grip so big on your heart that you will not release? Is it your children, your grandchildren, family members, your spouse, your possessions, your money, your car, your home? You hold it on so tight. What is it? We all have it. We all have it. 
You think you know your heart. You're like, oh my word, I give everything to him. I release it. I surrender it. Do you? God knows your heart. He is the one that will test. What are you not willing to release? That's the bigger question. And place on the altar of surrender. Do you grip so tightly your past, your wounds, your anger, you fill in the blank, unforgiveness, regret, fear. You need to place it all, all those all burdens. Some of them are sin. You need to place it all on the altar of surrender. Release it. And then pray and ask God to show you so he can reveal it to your heart so you can release it. And not hold it so tight that he has to pry it from your fingers. You do not want that. You want to willingly have a loose grip. You take it. You take it. Several, several, several years ago, really, really long time ago, I was on vacation. And um, I was with my sister, and I was looking for opportunity of witness. In, you know, days, I'll just make a quick, days click by one after the other. And then our cabin steward noticed my Bible. And she made a comment, she said, I love the Psalms. And so it engaged some conversation. And I said, oh yes, I said, and I, whatever her, na her name, I said, you know, your name is in the scripture as well. So I showed her in the Bible that her name was in there. She was totally shocked. So then she left, and the next day we had a little bit more conversation. And then I thought, she has the Psalms. Paula, what if she doesn't have the whole Bible? And then you get that, I call it, I call it the thumper. It's like when you know when God's calling you to do something. Give her your Bible. No. I'm, I'm being real. I'm being real with you. And I'm going, mm -mm. And he's going, mm-hmm. And I'm going, mm-mm. And I, even my sister said, what's the matter with you? Because my whole demeanor changed. I had to wrestle it down. <sighs> my Bible. Now for you, maybe that was not, no big deal. My sister had an answer. When we go to the port, we'll just buy her one. That's a good idea, but that's not what he's asked me to do. Because in my Bible are dates. In my Bible, I call them um, myomarkers, spiritual myomarkers, verses, things that blew up my life that would cause me to um, walk differently, amen? <laughs> Scripture verses that all of a sudden leap off the page, you're like, this is for me. So I was like, my Bible? I mean, I, mean, I, my, I should have brought it tonight. And I'm like, I don't know. So I, you, sleep, you sleep on it. And I, really, I, was, I was probably a whole day wrestling that down, what he had asked me to do. And then you release it. And you go, if this is what you want, I'm happy to do it. And you know what the truth of this one is? He really knows your heart, amen? He's not, he's not saying like, okay, here's my Bible. No. Here is my Bible. So we're at the end of the, the end of the vacation. She comes to the room and I have my Bible. And I called her by your name and I said, Would you like my Bible? It is the whole Bible. Because I really thought she only had Psalms, because that's all she ever talked about. And she looked at me and she said, Thank you, but I have a Bible in my own um, language, which would be her own version, you know? And she said, but thank you. And I'm like, oh, you know what it was? It was a test, right? 
But he knew, I, I had to, I mean, I had to lay that down. I don't know where you're at, but, but there's different things in my heart and in my life that God will say, you are laying that down. I guess I had a really tight fist on my Bible, <laughs> right? But it meant something to me. For everybody, it's gonna be something different. It's gonna be something, and that's not only material things, it's other things that he's asking you to release. Your time, your, your, um, what you're involved in. He's gonna ask you different things for you. It's all gonna be different, but it's surrendering it. And that's like, it was like, and then I got to keep my Bible. <laughs> but you know, I, and, I, and I honestly, and, and then my, my sister, but it was, I was just like, I said, but it was like what he was asking, it was personal. And isn't that the sweetness of Jesus? It is that relationship that he has with you to grow you. We had to be careful with our, our attitudes and what he has asked us to do and make sure we're not having idols out there raising anything up before him on the altar of sacrifice. Do you trust God enough to release it all? It's a good question to ask your heart. Do you trust God enough to release it all? I challenge you to pray and pray again and ask God to show you in all of us if there's anything that we are withholding something that we have such a tight grip on of someone or something that we can release it. Is your all on that altar of surrender? By faith when you are tested, will there be growth and greater faith gained through your testing? Will there be growth and greater faith gained through your testing? We want to say we want that to be yes. You want to move forward in faith with Abraham. By faith, when Abraham was tested, the heart and the feet moved together by faith. In this story, we are reminded that Isaac was a foreshadowing of the Christ. So much there, so much there. They needed that divine intervention and there was the ram, the sweetness of him, the relief for Abraham. Oh, like I said, he didn't have verse 13, but he knew that he knew that he knew that his God was faithful, his God was good. He had shown himself to Abraham all through the years, his faithfulness, he had that trust. God shows it to you and I over and over again, year after year, day after day. I am faithful to you. Trust me for it. And we needed that intervention ourselves, which was the Lamb of God for salvation. God's only Son, salvation offered to all. That first step of faith, ladies, was accepting Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Walking by faith and not by sight. To my sister tonight, I challenge you. What are you holding on to? Are you gonna allow God to search your heart deep? I'm talking deep. You think you turned it all over? But there's always that one thing, I'm not just gonna let you have that. No. He wants it all. We need to give him our all. Walking by faith and not by sight. Surrendering our heart. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we have Abraham to look at as an example. Oh, and Father, you just gave your life for us. So we would have salvation we thank you that the word of God is alive and it challenges our hearts. We thank you for the grace and mercy you show on our lives all the time. I pray, Father, that as we are tested and as my sisters and myself, we go through trial and testing, it is to grow our faith that we would grow deeper with our walk with you. 
Do not let the enemy help us step back. Do not let the enemy sidestep us. And do not let the enemies have us stay stuck. But you, Father, are the victor. You are the one that we lean to for strength and victory and walking forward in our faith walk. Times that we don't see what you see. That's why it's faith. We are yours, Jesus. Help us to surrender everything we have to you and not hold on something so tight that you have to pry it from our fingertips. Help us willingly release. Show us yourself, Father, and reveal in our hearts what we need to turn over to you. We ask all this thing through King Jesus' name. Amen and amen.